Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Windows 11 and Linux Mint. If you are using Windows 10, you can follow along as well because most of the tutorial will be the same. It's just the Windows interface that is different. So dual booting isn't always a great idea, but if you want the best of Windows and Linux at the same time and you don't want to choose between the two, then dual booting can be the solution. So what you will need today is a blank USB drive and you'll need a computer that's running Windows uh, so that you can dual boot it with Linux. We're going to start off and we're going to open up Edge. And we're going to go to the Linux Mint website. Um, specifically linuxmint.com forward slash download .php and the version I'm going to install today is the flagship cinnamon edition this is the main version and all you have to do is click on the download button and we're going to scroll down and you're going to find the country that is closest to you and you're going to click on one of the links and you can see that's going to start downloading in the top right corner and it says it's going to take about 15 minutes so next we are going to download the tool we're going to use to create the USB drive and that is called Etcher. So we can just type etcher.io into another tab and that takes you to etcher.belina.io. So if we click on download Etcher we can now click on this download link here and that will download in the top right corner as well. So when both of these are finished, we can continue with the install. So now those files have downloaded, we can close the web browser. To run Bellino Etcher, go to a Windows Explorer. Go to the Downloads folder and double click on the Bellino Etcher setup. And this is going to be what we use to create the USB drive. Make sure you've inserted a blank USB drive at this point or one where you don't care about the data on it because it will be wiped. We can close the Windows Explorer at this point and click on the flash from file button, navigate to your downloads folder and select the Linux Mint 22 that you downloaded previously. Click select target and choose the USB drive you want to install Blina Edge onto. So in this case this one here, I'm going to click select and then I'm going to click flash. This will start the process and it will pop up a little message saying do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device click yes and the process will now start and it takes 15 to 20 minutes to do this right so once the process is finished you'll see this screen here and we're just going to close down this window so what we need to do now is make space for linux mint and the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on the start menu and we're going to start typing disc MGMT and then you'll see it all come up with this create and format hard drive partitions and that's what we're going to click. So as you see this is my disk layout. Uh, now it, look, it may look quite confusing but I have two drives on this disk but for this guide I'm going to make it as if I've only got one drive which is normally the case if you've got a laptop or something like that. So the disk we're going to be playing with is this drive here and um, you can see it's got the C drive on it. So the disk 2 is the USB drive and this disk 0 is another SSD that I've got installed on this machine. So this is the drive I'm going to put Linux Mint onto. It's already got Windows on it. You can tell I've got Windows on it because it just says C and it's got the EFI partition on it. So what we need to do is make space for Linux Mint. So I'm going to right click on the C drive and I'm going to click on shrink volume and you can see it defaults to the amount that's available to shrink by. So we don't want to do it that much because it won't leave any space for Windows updates and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it 200 gigabytes. So that's 200,000 megabytes and I'm going to click shrink. Now obviously you need to work out from your own machine how much you can give but generally you, you want at least about 100, 100 20 gigabytes for Windows so anything after that becomes Linux Mint and realistically you want at least 30 gigabytes for Linux Mint um, so you need a drive of that sort of size 
So in this case, I've gone for 200 gigabytes and I'm going to click shrink. And you can see now my Windows is 250 gigabytes and I've got 195 gigabytes of unallocated space. And that's where we were going to be putting Linux Mint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close that. And we can now reboot the computer with the USB drive in and we can boot into Linux Mint. So when you restart your computer, you need to press the relevant function key to bring up the boot menu. Now on my computer, that is F7. On yours, that will be something different. And you can use Google to find out what the relevant boot key is for your manufacturer. Uh, or you can just randomly press buttons. And sometimes it flicks up on the screen as you're rebooting, telling you which of the buttons is the boot menu. So I'm going to restart the computer now. So I pressed F7 and you can see I'm entering the boot menu. It's given me three options, Windows Boot Manager, the USB drive and enter setup. I'm just going to choose the USB drive. And you've now got the Linux Mint boot menu and we're just going to click the first option. And it should now boot into Linux Mint. So here we are in Linux Mint and the first thing we want to do is click the install icon in the top left corner. A uh, welcome screen will appear and you can choose your installation language. As you can see, I've got English selected, but you can scroll up and down to pick the language that you want to choose. And then click continue. You will now be asked to choose your keyboard layout. You can see again, I'm going to choose English UK because I'm in the UK. And, and then I select the default keyboard layout. And then I click continue. You can now choose whether you want to install multimedia codecs or not. This helps install proprietary audio and video formats and things like that. You may as well tick the box and then click continue. And now we're at the installation type screen. Now it already gives you an option for installing Windows alongside Linux Mint and I'm not going to choose that option. I'm going to choose a something else option because I want to show you more control over dual booting then just the default options if you just wanted to install Linux Mint on its own and replace Windows you just choose the arrays uh, disk option which is the second one but for this guide we're going to choose the something else option so choose something else and click continue and you can see my disk layout here uh, the first disk is the one that I don't want to overwrite and it's the um, my data disk really the one with Windows is the one that's called Dev SDB, and you can see it's got an EFI partition, it's got a little 16 megabit partition, it's got the NTFS partition, that's my Windows partition, and then we've got the free space, and that's the free space that we've freed up, we shrunk our disk. So if you click on that and set this use as ext4 journal system, and then the mount point to forward slash, and then click OK, that will create the partition you need for installing Linux Mint. Now you can create other partitions and I've got a guide showing how um, partitioning works. But the next key piece of information is to change the device for the bootloader. And you want to set that to the same partition as the EFI. So you can see that's dev sdb1 which says Windows Boot Manager. And that's the EFI partition. You can see that at the top there. So that's important because that will then make sure that the uh, Linux Mint bootloader goes to the right place. Now click install now and Linux Mint will start to install but it will ask you are you sure whether you want to continue first? Yes if you do, no if you don't and then you get to choose where you are in the world and this sets your time on your computer so the clock's got the correct time so basically select which time zone you're in by clicking on the map and click continue. Now we need to set up a user, so you can see I'm setting up a user here, I'll call my username Gary, my PC is Gary Mint PC, I'll call my username Gary, and then I set a password and repeated it, and I've left the require my password to log in as checked, I don't like to log in automatically, I don't think that's very secure. If you want you can encrypt your home folder, I showed you recently um, the benefits of encrypting a folder, it's up to you whether you do it or not. For this demo I'm not going to do it, I'm going to leave it unencrypted, I trust my family and then I'm going to click continue. Now the files are copying across to uh, Linux Mint and then it will install and then that's the end of the process and you'll see the option to restart your computer. 
When the process is finished, you'll see this restart now message. Uh, click the restart now button and when, when the computer starts to reboot, uh, you can remove the USB drive. Now and you can see it's actually automatically booted into Windows and we'll fix that shortly. So here we are back in Windows and we're going to go back into disk management. And you can see I've got my Windows here, my Linux Mint here, and everything else is perfectly fine. So Windows worked properly. What it didn't do was show me the Grub menu. And I think the boot order on the PC is therefore wrong. So I'm going to reboot and go into the BIOS settings screens. And I can do that by pressing the escape key when I reboot the computer. So I'll show you how to do that now. I'm pressing the escape key to get into the boot menu. So you can see I'm in the boot screen. If I go down to the priorities down here, you can see you've got two options, Windows or Ubuntu. So if I click that and choose that, then it's going to make Ubuntu the first option. So now I'm going to press F4 to save and exit, and it should now boot into the Linux Mint Grub menu. And you see, I've now got the Linux Mint web menu. I can choose Linux Mint or I can choose Windows. So we'll choose Windows first. As you can see, I've successfully booted into Windows. And now I'm going to reboot and I'm going to boot into Linux Mint. As you can see, I'm now in Linux Mint and there's a welcome screen that you can follow through the steps on. Uh, I'm using a wired connection, so I'm already connected to the internet. But if you need to connect to Wi Fi, you can do so in the bottom right corner as shown here. You can now work your way through the welcome screen and do things like set up backups, uh, install new devices like your graphics card, you can run updates, you can change system settings, you can install more packages and you can set up a firewall. But for now that's the end of the guide. I hope you found it useful. If you did hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.